Hello and welcome to another episode of Learning to Fly with Grant Francis and Go Fly. Today the adventure was diversions, the act of finding your way around in the air off of your planned track. So you planned your route, you plan where you're going and something happens. There's a pocket of weather you need to avoid. You're running low on fuel or the airfield that you were intending to land at has been closed for some reason. You need to work out where to go while you're still in the air. So to do this, you're going to need uh, your chart, a uh, distance ruler calculator, a CRP1 flight computer or similar, and the handy cutout and keep guide uh, that you can download from flyinglessons.tv, also goflyuk.com. This is a really useful piece of kit. I was taught something uh, a few days ago by uh, one of the flight instructors, uh, his name is Steve, and it's that when you're flying, you lose about 90% of your capacity to actually flying the aircraft. So anything that you can do ahead of your flight in your flight planning stages uh, to help you is great. So little things like this cutout and keep guide or the wind chart on the back of it, uh, anything that you can do ahead of flying to make your workload in the air lighter is a great thing. So there'll be a few things in this video uh, that are going to help you and certainly help me um, with my navigation and diversions. So as part of your flight plan and vlog, it's a really good idea to do a little bit of extra work in case you need to divert while in the air. A few little guides to take with you into the aircraft before you fly are gonna really make your workload lighter. So the first thing you've done is on your chart as part of your standard navigation is you've put on the wind direction and speed. So let's say for this journey, the wind direction is 060 and it's 15 knots. So let's mark on our handy cutout and keep guide, the direction and speed of the wind. So 060 at 15 knots. And we'll just write that on there as well. 060 at 15 knots. From this, we can then do a, a small calculation, which is the max drift, the maximum you're gonna be drifted. And it's a, it's a really uh, quick and easy calculation. It's 60 over your true air speed times the wind velocity. So this equates to, in, um, in our plan, to 60 over 90, which is our true air speed, times 15. Now where's that calculator? Because I can't do that kind of maths in my head. So 60 over 90 times 15 is 9.9. .9. So for argument's sake, this we're gonna say is 10. We'll just round it up. It's a guess, it's a basic estimated, educated guess. So our max drift is 10. And we can enter that here on the handy cutout and keep guide. Um, let's just put today's date on it as well. So it's the 30th. The next thing to do is now we've worked out this drift, we can, we can figure out our ground speed. So we know the wind is coming from 060, so we mark on 060 on the whiz wheel. And let's just give us a 15 knot marker. So that is going to be there. There's a 15 knot wind at 060. So to work out our ground speed, well let's say we're heading north at 360 or zero degrees. So we spin this around to north, we put our true air speed in, so the T goes on the TAS, the true air speed, so that is 80 knots, so we can mark in here 80. So we know if we're traveling north with a true air speed of 90 knots, our ground speed is going to be 80 knots. 
So let's look at 45 degrees. We're going northeast. Simply spin it round to northeast. And we put the T on the TAS. So we know that our ground speed is going to be 74 knots. 74 knots. And doing these calculations here now and writing them down on an easy to refer to guide is really going to help you in the air. It's going to make that diversion so much easier and the calculations that you would normally do on the ground easily uh, much more efficient in the air. So once we've filled out all of our ground speeds on our handy cutout and keep guide, we've got our wind speed and direction, 060 at 15, and we've worked out our max drift based on here. So the max drift is 10 degrees, and we've placed it onto our handy cutout and keep guide, and also written it on our flight log as well. We know that the maximum we're going to be pushed off course is 10 degrees in any wind. So we can then translate this onto the map. So let's say we want to divert from Verwood, uh, sorry, from uh, Fording Bridge here down to Bewley. So we've drawn freehand on the map, two circles and a line between them. This is going to be our new track. So we can align our handy cutout and keep guide and work out that over Fording Bridge down to Bewley is about 120 degrees. So I've put this onto the onto the flight log. We know the wind speed and direction, and we know that we're going to be drifting off track by 10 degrees. So we can adjust our heading true by 10 degrees into the wind. So we're going to take off 10 degrees to make it 110, which means the magnetic heading is going to be 111 degrees. So that's our heading. But what's our ground speed going to be? How do you work that out in the air without messing around with a whiz wheel? Well, we've already worked it out. We know that 110 degrees is about there. It's between 78 and 86 knots. So halfway between the two, let's say that that is 81 knots, give or take a few. Our ground speed is 81. The last thing we need to do is work out the distance and the time it's going to take us to travel from point A to point B, diversion point A to diversion point B, which is where this really comes in handy, the CPM1. It's only a few pounds. You could buy them online and your flight school will probably have some as well. So let's work out the distance. Very easily, we can see that that is 14 nautical miles between Falling Bridge and Beauty, 14 nautical miles. And if we go down the guide, we can see that traveling at about 81 knots is gonna get us there in 10 minutes, between nine and 10 minutes. We can enter that on our log here. So it's 14 miles, 10 minutes. You can then enter your estimated time of arrival and your actual time of arrival based on the time that you leave this known point. And that is a diversion. It really is that simple. And all of the mathematics and the stress and the, and the working out has been done on the ground thanks to this really useful cut out and keep guide. And the best thing is, it's completely legal to use this in your practical test. Yeah, I agree. Right, so that's one eight, uh, that's one seven five, I'm gonna say. Heading, where are you off to? Good, picking up with you Roger though, good. One seven five. Um. It's gonna blow us off to the right, so I need to go one six five. 165, so that's 166 magnetic, and based on our sorry, got a lot of high ground, giving us a lot of lift there. Ninety-six, ninety. 
95, which is going to take us at 95 knots. I think that is. Request number two and eight. Request number five, number one. Nine minutes. Okay, good. Through. And the heading I said was 166. I'm just going to re-correct where we're going so yeah, I can going? get it. No, that's good. Uh, and it's going to be almost a 180 degree turn from where we are. So there we have it then, my first diversion. And as you can see, everything you can do to make your life easier in the air before you take to the sky is only a good thing. Poor preparation leads to poor performance. Plan as much as you can on the ground to make your life easier in the air. Do the maths when you've got the brain capacity to do it and a calculator and the tools at your disposal before you are faced with the situation of being overwhelmed in the air. If you've got everything ready before you go, that's a good thing. Planning, planning, planning. Poor planning leads to poor performance. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful, informative, or at least fun, and I'll see you in the next episode.